Welcome back, YouTubers, to yet another Q&A with us, the British Fist. Thank you. We are incredibly close to WrestleMania season, and because of that, we will answer a few of your WrestleMania questions in this video. So if you ask us any WrestleMania questions from this point onwards, I'm afraid they probably won't get answered, because by the time that we get around to answering them, it'll be after WrestleMania, and it'll be a little bit pointless. But you can continue to answer, sorry, ask, in, ask I should say, any questions in the comment section below. And my question to start this off to you is, this is going to show how bad the music business is. What's the WrestleMania 31 theme song? It's basically what I'm trying to say, it's NJ, is I know it. I don't know the name of the song, but it's fucking shit. No, that's at what least, I was trying to get to. At least... Like written in the stars, at least that was a that was quite a good song, and that was quite widely heard on the radio. This song, good and good and good and gone, good and good and good and gone. It's just that's the point I'm trying to get to. It's like I want, like yes, they're doing some special themes for us that's in the actual pay per view, but the theme song is normally the attraction stuff that we can relate to past pay per views. These WrestleManias should have. Which I guess they do mainstream, but it's not really the most hip hop hype song for hardcore fans. I have a question for you now, MJ. See as you decided to ask a question. What number WrestleMania is this? I said a few minutes ago. Oh, flip's sake. Just say it, because I don't know it. No. It's actually just called WrestleMania. Because Vincent McMahon thinks, thinks that saying WrestleMania 31 or WrestleMania 32 or above makes WrestleMania sound old. Believe that. Have you not noticed in the WrestleMania banners, it's just WrestleMania and then it's just got a play sign? But, well, Vince has never liked having birthdays, live birthdays, because it shows his age. So. so Yeah, so like Super Bowl 49, yeah. That, you know... They thought that sounded old. No, that's one of the good things about it. The fact you always claim Raw is the most, most you know, ongoing weekly episodic TV show. Oh, does that make Raw sound old? Just saying. What a stupid fucking idea it was. Whoever come up with that. Let's just make it WrestleMania without a number. For fuck's sake. We're back at number one. Jesus Christ. That was ridiculous. Anyway, to the actual question. Sorry about that. RFV089. How would you book the WrestleMania 31 main event and who would you have go over? Oh boy. I mean, it depends whether or not Brock Lesnar's leaving. Even if he's not leaving, I'd say give the belt to Reigns and have Seth Rollins cash the belt, cash in the money in the bank. Because at least then you'd have Reigns defeat Brock Lesnar and then the fans would at least go home happy knowing that their golden boy, which is Seth Rollins, not Daniel Bryan, would be going off out with the belt. I'm just that's I'm just, that why is not? almost what I used to think because I think the first time WrestleMania cash uh, cashing would be brilliant, but then I thought, okay, a cashing on Roman Reigns when he's not really getting the best reaction thanks WWE would turn Seth face. Well, to be honest, Brock Lesnar defeating John Cena like he did at SummerSlam kind of turned him face. Acceptable, yeah. So I'm just thinking they really want to do that to Seth. That's why I think a cash in on Brock still will turn in face. A cash in on Reigns, I think it could turn in face. So I think probably a clean match to make it the first Raw cash in, just so WrestleMania can finish with a winner between these two. There's too many ways of looking at it. I just think they should be careful not to turn Seth face. Are we agreeing that Roman Reigns has to go over at this WrestleMania? I don't really care. I think if Brock destroyed the hopes of Roman Reigns, I'd be laughing, I'd be jumping for joy, and then Brock can do what he was hinting on Raw, which is combining the WWE Championship and the UFC. Oh boy, it's like the WCW and WWE rivalry all over again, not. Um, yeah. yeah, I just don't care about the match, nope. I really don't. I, I, I should, but I don't. I don't really have too much else to say about it, if I'm honest. But I mean, I'd have Roman Reigns go over, personally. But then, would the crowd believe? Would the crowd buy it? Will they boo his ass out of the arena? Would it get to the point where the guy who's there 24-7 is going to get booed over the guy that's already left the company once by giving us a shit match at WrestleMania 20 and is probably going to leave the company again? 
Oh boy, uh, the fans are really smart, aren't they? All I can say is that there's recent reports, dirt sheets, as we talked about in our last Q&A, where he, he'll stay if he gets paid more than what UFC is offering him. Yeah, really. You know, I, I, I've got to respect Brock Lesnar from that point of view. At least that he's at least he's trying to go out of his way to get the most money he could possibly can. But I think with the but now the pay per view business is kind of gone, and now WWE seemingly are just putting on three hour rolls for their special events. Is there much point in keeping him around? Is there much point in paying him however many dollars a year? Because what big business has he really done for the WWE? Has he drew? Has he drawn network subscribers? There are what a million. Oh boy, well that's good, isn't it? Well, pay per views. I think he did draw because like SummerSlam with Triple H and mm, stuff. He drew, but not massively. He didn't draw like he drew. Well, he like, helped three... that pay per view. Oh, he he helped Extreme Rules get two hundred twenty thousand views when usually it would get two. I believe about two hundred thousand. He helped SummerSlam get three hundred fifty when he would usually get three hundred thousand. Uh, but I just like how I just wonder if Brock Lesnar's return was, you know, for how much they paid him, was really as good as WWE makes it out to be. That's all. Well, I've said this in a while. I cared less and less and less about uh, Brock Lesnar since he's returned. And The Rock got on for people saying, oh, he's only here for the money. Brock's basically said, I'm only here for the money. Pay me more than UFC is. And Batista was here full time. And the crowd crapped on him. You know, he actually made, you know, they made it clear. He's here full time. He's going to work house shows. He's going to work Raws and Smackdowns and pay-per-view events. And yet the crowd shout on him. And they've done the same to the Brock. But Brock can get away with it. He's Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I mean, you know, wow. if the Rock and Brock Lesnar can't really help your pay-per-view business, then moving to the network was probably a good idea because the pay-per-view business just is not going to work if Brock Lesnar and the Rock can't bring in viewers. No. Just saying. Uh, RF zip, sorry, RF13. Hey, British Fist, can you give your thoughts on this? WWE is obviously going with a Triple H versus Sting match, and it would and it would seem as WWE are teasing Taker versus Wyatt with the promos that Bray is doing at the moment. Why would WWE do this? Surely, if Taker and Sting are going to be at WrestleMania 31, why not have them take on each other? It's what everyone wants. It just seems the obvious choice to me. What do you guys think? Okay, question. Yep. Do you care about Triple H Sting? Do you care about Bray Wyatt Undertaker? Would you care about Sting vs. Undertaker? Do you think people would care about Sting vs. Undertaker? Exactly. Just, yeah, I mean, oh, they're in the company for the first time ever. Same company for the first time ever. And they're not facing each other at WrestleMania. I mean, I know it's pretty late, but why not fucking do it now when you know that they can both do it? I'm sure this is going to get re-asked later today or another Q&A, but my biggest reason for the whole of this is I the reason I don't want anything to do with Taker, out of respect, the streak. That's why this question, I'm not really nodding my head to having Taker versus Sting, more the streak. But out of what we've been given to what we could have had, I can see why you're asking this. Uh, especially as Undertaker is not going to be on TV until WrestleMania, I mean... It's just got to the point now where no one cares. No one cares. They don't. No. When you say there's crickets, no one cares. Robert Hernandez. Some of the Ruben matches to Mania are Sting versus Triple H and Bray versus Undertaker. Would you change them or keep them the same? Same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what I would have done with Triple H. I know. Oh, what? I know, but I think it's really too late because of what the WWE had in mind is over the course of 2014 going to 2015, there's been a feud between Triple H, or The Authority, and The Shield slash Roman Reigns. I just don't know why Triple H never faced Roman Reigns. Because they tried to rush this his push, and they didn't allow him to have these matches before he was in the main event of WrestleMania. But Mania, they could have had. Finally, the, the thing they were building up to... Triple H versus Roman Reigns. And that would leave Undertaker versus Sting. And then perhaps maybe Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Ryan. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Brock could have faced Seth. They kept Seth face. They could have, I mean, Brock Lesnar could have probably faced John Cena if they didn't if already have four up. matches. Yeah, they, they, I think they've done this wrong. But that's just my opinion but mm. of Mania. Basically, the point we're trying to make is we don't care about many of the WrestleMania matches and the no. way that they've been built. Just don't. Terrible. Renegade Man 83. 
Uh, do you think it's a good idea for WWE to have Hulk Hogan and Duck Macho Man instead of his brother Lanny Poffo, knowing they hate each other and Macho Man wants nothing to do with Hogan? I don't, re I don't really think it's from a friendship perspective. I think they're doing this this way because Macho Man is a massive inductee for the WWE and they want someone like Hulk Hogan, who is a massive impact in the business, to induct Macho Man. I mean, if you add, you know, just imagine if you add, like, someone who's... Imagine if you had like a Roddy Piper inducting Macho Man. No, you just go all the way. You have Hogan. It's just, it's got nothing to do with their friendship. It's to do with the characters, and they're on like nearly the same level. I think making the most of Hogan, making Hogan have big things in his time in the WWE, and making the biggest inductee for a big name. You just want the biggest things possible. And I think going for someone that probably fans may not have heard of compared to fans that have heard of, heard of Hogan to do it, it I think it would have a bit better. Uh, are you looking forward to watching WrestleMania 31? Don't you mean WrestleMania? Play button? <laughs> no. And I won't be watching WrestleMania. I, I, there's no, I mean, how, what is it? It's the 15th of March when we record this. WrestleMania is on, I believe, the 29th. No one cares. It's just... I have no reason to watch it. I don't care about the main event. I don't care about Triple H Sting. I don't care about Bray Wyatt versus uh, Undertaker. I care somewhat about Cena versus Rusev, but I know how that's going to end, so what's the point? The IC title match has got Daniel Bryan in it. It's like you go from main event in WrestleMania one year to being a filler guy in the IC title match. You've got a tag team match between the Bellas and Paige and fucking AJ Lee. You know, what the fuck is there to look forward to? I mean, even WrestleMania 27, at least that had Cody Rhodes versus Rey Mysterio. At least that, at least that had fucking Undertaker versus Triple H. And at least had that had The Rock guest hosting. At least those were things to look forward to. But what do we have to look forward to here? Oh, the return of Undertaker. Great. Oh, Sting's going to be wrestling. Well, okay. But he's going to be wrestling Triple H. A dream match which no one wanted. The death of WCW. Yeah, well, it died in 2001. It's already dead. You know, if there's a dead horse on the fucking ground, do you continue to punch it? No! When it comes to WrestleMania, I'm very disappointed with the WWE. It's not the pay-per-view itself. It's the build. I've been watching Raw, and we normally get excited for the build to WrestleMania, the road to WrestleMania. And this year, I've just not seen the enthusiasm in the WWE to make WrestleMania feel like a big deal. These wars have made us feel like we're building up to Extreme Rules or possibly Summer Slayback. Yeah, and I'm just disappointed. Like, I'm sure WrestleMania could pay off without a few surprises, a few names. But I'm just not feeling this year, and I think it's the build then followed by the choice of matches. I mean, I don't, I don't really watch, I don't watch Raw or SmackDown, as you know, but it's like, I look at the card, and I'm just like, why should I watch this? It's almost like the road to WrestleMania has first step, potholes, second step, a bridge with no middle, and then if you get past that, the third step is a load of roadworks, and you'd have to do an average speed of 50 when you want to do 70, and that's fucking frustrating. Terrible. Anyway... Let's move on to these questions. Griefer Beyond 21. Cena is in the mid card now. Is that a good thing? Yes. Yes, it is. The only problem is now he's in the mid card. You just know he's gonna. You just know he's gonna face some young guy. Oh, I don't know, like Bray Wyatt, and ruin his momentum. You think Rusev is gonna come out of WrestleMania looking good? You think Rusev is gonna come out of WrestleMania with the momentum still intact? Oh, you better fucking hope. Because that's not going to happen with John Cena. I'm sorry, but we saw it last year. What happened with Bray Wyatt? I, I'm disgusted like this. I should be pumped with joy because John Cena's not headlining WrestleMania. But I look at Bray Wyatt and the point that he should have gone over because of the way he had been built up to that mania and to go forward to the rematch at Extreme Rules. John Cena's already faced Bray Wyatt, and as much as I hope that Rusev or Lana have a backup plan and Rusev wins, I just, the WWE have not given me a reason to think 
you know what, this is the first WrestleMania where John Cena is going to do something that he should have done last year or years before. If the WWE actually gave us the feeling that it could happen, maybe I'll be different to this question. But the track record, the feeling I got from last year, the US title be on the line, I'm sure Cena could try and rebuild the championship, but... I, I, I just don't care about him being the mid card or not because I don't think he's going to benefit this opponent. But to answer your question, Griefer Beyond 21, um, right, yeah, it's good that he's in the mid card rather than the main event. So we'll just we'll just go with that. Yeah. Aaron Chris, four questions here. Do you think that Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt would be a better match if the streak didn't end? On the one hand, yes, but on the other hand, it would have been quite predictable. I love this question. Thank you very much. Because this goes back to the question we asked, we got asked earlier. I think if the streak had not finished, if he lost to someone like Bray Wyatt in any way possible, like it could happen up this year or whatever's going to happen, I would be jump for joy and thinking Bray Wyatt is a good guy to probably have ended the streak because he's a younger guy. He's staying in and at least. I'd want to see this match more and the future following this match. So I think the streak does play a really strong part, in my opinion, on Taker's future and his win or losses. There's no doubt it would be a better match, but there's no way Bray Wyatt can end the streak. No fucking way. He's not been built up to end the streak. So unfortunately, I think if that was still the case, Undertaker would have to win. Whereas now, I think Undertaker's streak has ended so he can lose and it wouldn't really matter all that much. Oh, yeah, it's just my opinion. Do you think The Undertaker should have beat Brock at WrestleMania 30? Uh, uh, I mean, the big question is, have WWE got their return on that ending the streak? Have they got their return out of Brock Lesnar? And will putting Roman Reigns against him, the guy that ended the streak, will that make him into a big megastar? So we're not really going to know the answer to that question until this whole thing of Brock Lesnar finishes until he puts over a guy and puts him over as a million bucks. We won't really know the answer to the question, but, I mean, short answer, Undertaker, and Brock Lesnar beating Undertaker was a joke, but there you go. I think Brock Lesnar needed to do something dramatic to get his heel reaction back mm. after, like, John Cena and stuff. So I'd say the way they did it got Brock to be hated more because he ended the... Well, Meant to have ended The Undertaker, but I still think that Taker should have just barely won. What about Big Show versus Kane at WrestleMania 31? Don't make me puke. They're teasing oh. it, and it could be a last minute match, but to be honest, I think having them as backup in the authority is a much better thing than having to see a rehash feud. Just put them in the Andrew Giant Battle Royal, let them be part of that clusterfuck. Fuck it. Would you like to see Shawn Michaels versus Daniel Bryan or Triple H at WrestleMania 32? No, I think Shawn Michaels should just stay out of retirement. He is retired in the best way he can. There's no point in him coming back and wrestling. None. The, the retirement is the biggest part in this. Like, having him face Daniel Bryan, a match fans have mentioned in the past and could see the quality in it. But I think the retirement out of respect and not being one of those guys who retires but then falls back into a wrestling company, <coughs> uh, I think would benefit. So did you have a cough there, Andrew? No, Rick Flair. Oh, yeah, 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 I oh, did. Oh, Flair, yeah, Flair, Flair. Um, <coughs> oh, good. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, well, we are both good now. Oh, damn, I've got a bit of a cold. But Shawn Michaels is a man of his career and he's been respected for staying out of wrestling. Paul Erickson Alejandrino. I do like that name. I wish my name was Daniel Ella Hangrino. Mom, why don't you change my bloody name? Do you think that Daniel Bryan competing and winning the IC title at WrestleMania is a good thing or is it a bad thing considering that where he was in the main event last year? Ah, just this whole IC title. Oh, we're going to build it up by having them steal the belt and then all steal the belt and that's how they get... Oh, yeah, that's good build, isn't it? Sorry, when it comes to this, I do see the downfall of Daniel Bryan because he went from the main event to the IC. And yes, the, the, this is their 50th chance of trying to give the championship prestige by having a top guy in the match. And it 
But in upside, I did say Daniel Bryan needs to be rebuilt, but I don't think he needs to be rebuilt in the mid card. But I'm not looking at this match for Daniel Bryan. I'm looking at for Dean Ambrose and Bad News Barrett. I don't really understand how a character, I mean, The Miz went from main event WrestleMania to being a jobber. I don't understand how you can have a character like Daniel Bryan who was so over at one point and is still somewhat over. I don't understand how you can just have him relegated to an IC title match. And I don't really understand how fans are happy with this. Oh, we're going to get a great match. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? Because that's really going to help spotlight Daniel Bryan, him being a one-eighth of a match. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? I'm sure Daniel Bryan's going to make the match good for WrestleMania, but to win it, no. I think he should pull out a feud from this. He doesn't need the belt. I mean, no. someone else, I mean, someone like Dean Ambrose needs the belt more. Daniel Bryan doesn't need to win this match. The fact that he's even in it is a joke. I mean, Dolph Ziggler, fine. But even Dolph Ziggler, you could say, is a bit of a joke because they had him be the sole survivor of the Survivor Series and they had him flip-flop the belt with fucking Luke Harper and they never capitalised on the fact that he was, you know, the guy that ended the authority, essentially, and even though they got brought back. So the whole thing's a joke. You know, if it was Money in the Bank, okay, then you're talking. Money in the Bank, great. But, no, I just... Uh, Daniel Bryan competing and winning in the IC title, why? He needs to be in a higher-level singles match. I mean, it's, it's fucking obvious. I don't know why. It almost like, it's almost like WWE have said to themselves, right, let's try and get as many people on our payroll at a WrestleMania match. Andre the Dying Battle Royal, and hell, the IC title is never going to matter anyway, so you might as well pretend that it matters and make people think that it matters by giving it its own match at WrestleMania with eight fucking ten people in it. And this is where we got asked earlier. The whole card and the wrestlers in what matches they've been put in, we just disagree with so many things about this mania. And we're going to end the, we're going to end this Q&A on a somber question. Ebro S. WrestleMania 31 is on my 20th birthday. Should I be happy or sad about that as a wrestling fan? Well, firstly, I just want to get this out of the way. Fuck it. Don't fuck don't watch WrestleMania 31. Have a fucking good 20th birthday. That's all I can say. Do something good. Invite your friends over, family, etc. Have a great 20th birthday and don't let WrestleMania get in the way. Do not let WrestleMania get in the way. I'm going to say this. I wasn't excited to have Elimination Chamber, you know, when they before they changed it to this lane-ass lane. stupid lane. thing. Did you say lane-ass? That was actually quite a good joke. It was indeed. Thank you very much for mm. pointing that That's out. Lane-ass, but yeah. As for WrestleMania, I'm going to be one of the fans who, even though I we've been ripping on it and thinking this is a horrible WrestleMania, I'm sure the pay-per-view is going to give us a few surprises. But, depending where you are in the world, if it's a last-minute thing to do and everyone's gone to bed and you've celebrated it to your heart content, watch your sleep. Don't let wrestling get in the way of your birthday. That's all I can say. Um, but... Yes, but... If we are going to be late to be saying this, but on behalf of the British Fist, happy birthday. Of course, yeah. Well, you know, I kind of did say that, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, from half from us, have a happy birthday on, I believe it's March the 29th, which is also the same day as WrestleMania, so there we go. Um, yeah, that's been a QA. and a We've just answered all the WrestleMania questions, so if you have any more, no point in asking us now because we've already answered like the 10 we had and stretched out to a whole 24 minutes. I think we did pretty well there, to be honest, NJ. Kind of also did a WrestleMania preview as well in that whole thing. Just just not excited for it. But okay. people, this is it. As much as we want you to ask us more questions, more questions the better. We want to see them in the comments section below. Give us your thoughts on WrestleMania. <laughs> Make this your point on hearing how many of you are against this pay-per-view or how many of you are being... Two-sided, which I used to be when it came to WrestleManias and things in general. But this WrestleMania is a big whack. In the very famous uh, way of family fortunes, I guess. Yes. Um, <laughs> Les Dennis, eh? What a legend. Um, so, yeah. So, I won't be watching WrestleMania. I don't know. Are you going to do a review on it? Are you that bothered? Is it just going to be a maybe if it's good, I will. Maybe, but if I can't be asked, I won't. Thank you. Is that pretty much the way it's going to go with you? And it's sad because it's WrestleMania, but this year is 
my worst feeling for WrestleMania I've had in some time, if ever. I mean, at least I was excited for WrestleMania 27. I know it disappointed me, but at least I was excited for it. And from 30, the feeling you got from that. Yeah, it's more of the Daniel Bryan fans, but it's also the story going into it. What's the story for this year? Uh, the, no, the, the day, no. The day the numbers ended? No, thanks. <laughs> but people... We've created something new here where we answer your questions. Oh, yeah. So please continue to send Second, second week in a row. It did. It did Doing it something new every week. week. Indeed. So thank you very much for watching. And for Mr. Parkin. I thought you were Anderson. Your name is Anderson. Parkinson. Parkinson. <laughs> okay, Parkinson. <laughs> Daniel Parkinson, that's what we'll call you. And for me, scrap the NJ for a minute, Niall. Thank you very much for watching. And good. Bye.